Hey, everybody. I'm Nathan Warnock. The, wait, wait for it. I'm Andrea Warnock. And this is Easton. That's Easton Warnock. And we were uh, all on top of getting ready to sit down here, uh, get this episode going. I'd pushed start on the countdown video <laughs> and then the rumble down under. The thunder not me. down under. Well, not alleg allegedly not Andrea. Easton just <clears throat> pooped like crazy. Yes, he did. And he threw up. Well, you know. He came out he's, of all ends. He's living his best life. I think that's right. what we call that. Uh, so go team, Warnock. Now we got barf all over our chairs. And look at him. He doesn't care. He's like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Like, look at it. Are you going to feed here, me more? He's or here what? for it. He's here for Sunday Night Live. That's right. <clears throat> that's right. So uh, thank you all for joining us as people are kind of filing in now. Love to have you give us a what's up in the comments so we kind of know who is uh, who's joining us. The way that this Sunday Night Live works is we – Pick a topic that's kind of struck us. Sometimes it's been during the week. Sometimes it's been recently. In the case of tonight, it was like uh, three hours ago. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we share a little bit. <laughs> Shit, what's that? I said, I've already forgotten what it is. So it's going to be, she's going to learn about it right along with you. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we usually have, if we have questions in the comments, those always get priority. So if you have questions or comments for us, marriage or family related or, or not, I mean, if you want to know my thoughts on, I don't know, the Cubs, you can feel free to ask me that. Uh, but uh, we'll kind of take your questions, and then usually we have a question or two that have been submitted to us or that we've come across ourselves. So here's the thing that the Warnock family does. Oh, yes, now I remember. What On Sunday evenings, <clears throat> we do a family movie night. So our kids, and you, you probably have seen this on our channel, our kids watch very little television or spend very little amounts of time on electronic devices right. so as a part of our day generally we do television <clears throat> while ryan's getting her her did yeah right so, so that she cries less so you know five minutes right so they'll watch five minutes of some show and then on sunday nights we do a family movie night the kids rotate in getting to pick the movie and tonight it was jackson's pick and so he wanted to watch Cheaper by the Dozen 2. So uh, if you're not aware, there's a series of movies called Cheaper by the Dozen, Steve Martin. It's I'm pretty sure it's a remake of an older movie. Um, but uh, it's about a couple who has 12 kids. And he wanted to watch Cheaper by the Dozen 2. Well, this created drama. Because several of us, including me, and I think you, yeah. had never seen Cheaper by the Dozen 1. Right. So, Well, we, and apparently all the, all the kids had watched it at a grandparent's house, but some of them couldn't remember. Right. So anyway, we decided to watch Cheaper by the Dozen Yeah, so we one. made a parenting executive decision that we're watching Cheaper by the Dozen 1, and then the trade-off was I told Jackson he could pick the movie next week. So if he wants to watch Cheaper by the Dozen 2 next week, Great. Now, here's a little secret. He'll have a completely different movie he wants to watch Probably. come next week. That's okay. But we watched Cheaper by the Dozen 1. Uh, not a Christian movie. Um, right? Don't tell my pastor, but it's not, it wasn't a pure flicks movie. It was a Disney movie. It was a, I mean, it was, Disney movie. It was fine. Um, <clears throat> but it's about a family that has 12 kids. Um, and, you know, he's a football coach and, you know, all hilarity that you would imagine happening with 12 kids ensued many times during the movie that Andrea's like cringing at the, the messes the in messiness. their house. Oh my gosh. And, I mean, and she sure. was having a moment. And I'm, and I'm watching this thinking, I'm sure if you have 12 kids, this is the way it is. Like you cannot keep up with the craziness or the mess of 12 kids. I mean, 14 people in a house. Right. And the destruction. Right. And, and it, look, it's a movie, right? We, I get it. But, you know, they, they the parents all take it in stride. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but they're giving the background of the story, the husband and wife are Steve Martin, and I forget who the, plays the wife's character. Um, but they're giving the background of their family as like the setup to this movie in the beginning. And she was talking about how they met in college. He was on the football team. She was learning to be a sports journalist. And then they got together and they both had these big dreams 
of having these big time careers. And then went through the story of starting to have the kids and of course, a couple sets of twins and all that kind of stuff. And she made a comment. There was a line in the movie by the wife where she said, we still wanted our careers. We still wanted our fancy careers, but instead we decided we wanted our, we family, wanted our more. family more. Yeah. And the line really struck me um, because it's it stands sort of in bizarre um, contrast contrast to how I think a lot of people now think about families. And this is not look at it's Steve Martin, right? I mean, it's not like this. This movie didn't come out in 1963, yeah, right? It's probably a 2005 movie or whatever it is. But the amount the the speed at which and it's a, probably a generational thing where generations are going, you know, we have a choice between our career and our family and we're taking our career and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And no one's stopping to ask the question, is that actually okay? Right. From a Christian standpoint, yeah. right? That's what we're, that's what we're thinking from. I think the other side of that too is acknowledging that, having kids or for us having a big family there is some sacrifice that that of course of things that we want but we want our family more of course you know nathan and i talk sometimes about gosh the if we had just had two kids rather than five or whatever we'd have so much more free time we'd have more money to be able to do these things and you'd have less throw up on you currently i would yeah <laughs> You know, that our, our lives would look different. And honestly, they'd be easier. But we want... So, yeah, I I want some of that for sure. sure. But I want my family more. And I think recognizing that um, there's sacrifices that... I don't... I didn't... I would like to have those other things too. Sure. But but I'm choosing what's what's better, you know. Right. And and it's okay still to say, like, mm, I kind of miss those things. Or sure. I wish I had those things. Yeah, sure. And that's okay. Sure, sure. But I, but I, it, it really it really did strike me. And I think it's a question that I would ask you as you're watching this, you know, wherever you're watching it is, where, if you're being honest, you don't have to respond. This is not a respond in the comments thing. This is just for your own thinking about as a, as a person or as a couple. What things are more important to you than family? Um, and and this is not a guilt trip thing. I mean, we have a big family. And I believe that having a family is a God-honoring thing. I do believe that God's uh, command in the Bible would be fruitful and multiply. I, I don't believe that that was a, hey, I need Noah and Adam and Eve to do this. Otherwise, humanity is going to disappear. Right? God had just created humanity out of nothing. Yeah. So if Adam and Eve had just decided not to have kids, God could have figured, figured it out, figured it out <laughs> sure. for himself. I believe that was a command because there is something intimately valuable to the Lord about family. Marriage first, but also the raising of another generation of, of children. And man, it just it, it really struck me that line of, <clears throat> you know, our careers were important. But our family was more important. Yeah. And it was, you know, maybe momentarily convicting for me, too, to think about, man, here I am sitting here in our living room watching a movie with my whole family. You know, is this, do I have an appreciation for this family that God's given me that that truly reflects how he thinks about yeah. the family that he's given me? Yeah. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, you don't expect to flip on a a kid's movie and walk away going, man, that's a really great line um, in a movie. But we both, when, when they said that line, I think you and I both looked at each other Yeah, we're and we're like, like, man, that's, that's a that. great line. It is. So, yeah, I mean, that's the question for, for, for us to talk about and for you guys to think about is, you know, it's great. It's a great thing to have a career and God has given, I'm sure every person watching this, um, and 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 all every person around us has given us unique talents and abilities, but having a family is not a waste of those talents and abilities. And I think maybe that's where 
my papa bear claws start to come out is because it's starting to feel now culturally like the feeling is if you're going to do anything other than be a professional something with your life other than a, a professional mom or a professional dad that you're really wasting your talents and abilities and it's just not uh, one it's not biblically supported if you look at things from a christian standpoint but two you know it really devalues family so i think the other side of that too that you could think of is what are you holding on to that is you that you enjoy that but god's saying yeah this is a this is a good thing that that you enjoy but i've got something a, a different road i want you to take and it's better you know and so maybe what's something that you that you like that would be a sacrifice to give up for the road that god's asking you to go down yeah and you don't know what that road would have i mean it may be something far better than what you chose. I, Nathan and I talk sometimes about, you know, if we were to get to the end of our lives and God were to play a video for you, that's like, if you had made the choices that I had asked you to make yeah, every here's single what time, here's what like. your life would have looked like. And, and, you know, so often we're trying to hold on so hard to what we have when we know God's asking us to do something different and maybe we choose what we have instead. And, you know, God wants to give us in so much more than we could ever think, ask, or imagine. Yeah. And um, I think if we were to get to the end of our lives, we would see, gosh, why did I hold on to all those things <laughs> when he wanted me to do something different? Sure. Um, you know, I think that's that's something to think about, too, in regards to that. Or that's at least something I was thinking about in regards right. to that, that line of the movie. Like, you, you like this thing, but God has something... A, a different adventure for you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, what do you guys think? Um, put put your put your comments in the comments section uh, if there's anything about that 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 strikes you, and we will uh, we'll circle back on that, um, babe. So, in the meantime, <clears throat> questions. Did you have a question for me this week? I did. Gosh, what was it though? You sent it to me. Earlier. I know. I believe, I believe it was something along the lines of, "What advice would you give couples who are looking for?" Council. Was, wasn't that it? Was that it? I don't know. That's terrible. <laughs> I should have, I forgot I had that here. question for you. I will, uh, I'll look for it if you want to fill in for me for a second. Sure. So, um, I don't really know what to fill in. Oh, I can give you a sweet story of Ryan. This happened not last week, but the week before. So, I was putting Link into bed and I could hear Easton downstairs crying and it's like, Sorry, dude, you're just going to have to cry for a little bit while I'm putting Link into bed. So I get done putting Link into bed, and I don't hear any crying, but I hear something in my room, and so in my bedroom. So I go into my room, and I turn the corner, and just as I turn the corner, I see Ryan, Ryan's little little self, and she's in the rock in my rocking chair holding Easton, like, you know, like in the cradle hold, and she's rocking back and forth with him singing hymns to him and she had gotten him to sleep and it was just and she's just it was very sweet oh my gosh it was the sweetest ryan six it was just the sweetest thing ever she had picked him up carried him upstairs decided she was just gonna take on that mama role and she just rocked him to sleep while singing right. hymns to him oh my gosh the sweetest thing ever mm -hmm. anyway so yeah super those sweet. are the fun moments of raising kids that you get that you're like, man, that's just burned into my head. I don't know what you mean. I don't, I don't know what you mean. Fun moments. That's just how our kids are all the time. I mean, they just <laughs> Ryan is like that all the time. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I mean, for the most unless part, unless she misses a nap for three or four days in a row, or well, eesh. with with she's very nurturing to everybody, but yes, but when she's missed naps, she's less nurturing towards yes. The older, the older people. She's always yes. nurturing towards Easton, though. That's true. Okay, so here was the question that that you received. Yeah, thank you. For that up. How do I find good marriage help? Oh yes. Do I go to a counselor, a church? How do I know if I'm getting good, sound advice, help, or counseling? Yes, thank you for reminding me of, of the question that I was supposed to ask you. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Uh, so. <clears throat> 
here's a couple of things that I would suggest. If you find yourself in a position where you need to find good marriage help, and it could be for yourself, right? It could be for a, a couple that's come to you, right? Maybe a couple's come to you and said, hey, we're in need of help. Can you point us in the right direction? Um, two things with that that I would say. First of all, <clears throat> if it's you that needs the help, you have to be honest with each other as a couple about where you're at. There's an awful lot of couples that tragically fall into this sort of passive aggressive, I think we need help thing. And the other spouse goes, uh, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> right. And meanwhile, this is ballooning into a really huge deal when the conversation isn't really, I think we need help. It's we need help. Like not, <clears throat> not maybe should we do this? It needs to happen. So who can we go to? And if you don't respond to this, then I'm just going to show up here at home with someone who I think can help us yeah. because we need help, <clears throat> right? That's the first thing is you have to be honest about what you feel. And, and it, probably the likelihood is that you're not both on the same page with whether you need help or to what extent you need help. That's not uncommon. Yeah. But if you see red flags in your relationship and you think you need some outside help, then guess what? You need some outside help. Um, <clears throat> so the question then is, how do you find that help? Well, the, the, the second half of that question, which is how do I know if I'm getting good or sound advice? It, it starts and finishes from a Christian perspective of we must understand that the Holy Spirit speaks to us through God's word primarily. So we must know God's word. And that doesn't mean you have to intimately know every single passage of the Bible, but you need to, to take seriously your role of building relationship with the Lord and spending that time in his word. Because at the end of the day, even the most professional, God-fearing, loving Christian counselor can fall into the trap of that they're human and they can give advice that's not mm -hmm. biblically supported. And the only way to really be able to know is the advice is the advice I'm getting biblical or not is to know the Bible for yourself. <clears throat> now, here's the second thing you can do. As you get advice from those around you, and man, I would encourage you even do this with your friends and family that want to help. When they give you advice, I would ask them, hey, thank you so much for sharing that. Do you know where I can find that in the Bible? Because I'd like to know more about that. Put them on the spot mm -hmm. because you're going to either get a, <clears throat> you know what? You caught me. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Let's look that up together. You might get a, I'm really glad you asked. Here's where you can go to find that. Or you might get a, well, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where it is in the Bible. I just feel like this is good advice. That that you should be concerned about, right? Because the I feel thing is is really problematic. We, we we're we're going to talk about this on Marriage Monday tomorrow morning. <clears throat> the verse in the Bible that says the heart of man is uh, hopelessly wicked. Who can know it? Right. That whole uh, I think this is good advice is can be really problematic. The first part of the question, which is how do I find good marriage help? Man, start with the church. Um, if you're not a part of a Bible-believing church, then find one. Um, if you need help finding one, email us, marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com, and we will help you find one, even if you live outside of where we live. Like I'm so passionate about finding a community of believers that can support us in marriage. So if this is something where you go, man, I feel like I don't have that community, please email us and we will help you find it. Yep. Because the first thing you need is a Bible-believing community that then you can go to the pastor, the head pastor, or you can go to a pastor of you know, care ministry or family ministry or marriage ministry or whatever that church body has in place. And just tell them, hey, 
we need some help. Can you help us? And and then the other side of that, to go back to what I said earlier, is don't take their word for it just because they're a Bible-believing fellowship. Right? When you meet with that pastor and his wife or someone they refer you to and you sit down and talk, ask them, hey, this advice you're giving us, where is that found in the Bible? Because they should be able to answer that. Um, and, you know, look, at uh, the, the, there's, there was a question here about should we go to a counselor? If there's been a breach of trust, right? So if there's been infidelity, this is advice I give to guys who've cheated on their wives. If their wives want to go to counseling, then go to counseling with them. And I'm talking about professional paid marriage counseling. If that's going to be meaningful to your spouse who you're trying to show, I will do anything for this marriage, then please go. I would strongly encourage you to insist on a Christian marriage counselor, someone that you've interviewed ahead of time, you and your spouse, and you've asked them, hey, are you going to be approaching this from a biblical standpoint? And they've answered yes to that. Um, Here's the problem with counseling. Counseling is based on the idea that we can do certain things in our lives to modify behavior, right? It's behavior modification based. So, hey, do these exercises or when this thing happens, train yourself to think about this other thing. It's behavior modification. That's what the modern counseling idea is based on. Some of it, right? Yeah. Right. Christian counseling is based on the idea that bar the help and provision of the Holy Spirit, I can't behavior modify myself into being a good person. I can't do it because I'm a sinful human being. Because the heart is hopelessly wicked. Exactly right. right. That's right. right. That's right. So they come into that with a standpoint of, well, we need to focus on the heart attitudes first because all the behavior modification in the world isn't going to matter if your heart doesn't change. The other thing about where, where I do recommend counseling is in what I call um, niche or, or unique uh, problems that you need help with in your marriage. So here's a primary example. Alcoholism. Right? If, if one of you or your spouse is dealing with alcoholism and you need to get help in that, I would recommend going to the church and getting help in your marriage, but I would also recommend that you see someone who – has some experience and specialty in dealing with addiction. Mm -hmm. Because addiction isn't just a heart issue. It is a heart issue. But it isn't just a heart issue. It also can be chemical. It can be psychological. There's a lot of other pieces to that. And I do think counseling can be helpful in that arena. But just marriage, just or help just between the two of you as a couple, I, I don't generally recommend that people go to professional counseling for that. Um, go to go to your church, go to your community of believers and 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 sit down with them and, and get in the word and talk through it. That's a great answer. Thank you. Thanks, babe. Thanks for giving the information. You bet. All right, guys. Well, if there aren't any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the comments. If you have them, if we don't get any other questions, then we're going to jet on out of here. Uh, so what do we got coming up this week? Uh, tomorrow morning. We will have a Marriage Monday episode where we will be – well, well, you should tell it because it was inspired by a, by a Facebook post that you saw. Yeah, it's just um, being careful about where we seek advice from. And we talk mostly about marriage advice. But it comes from a Facebook post that I saw of somebody who was in a rough situation in, the, in their marriage. And their first – their, their the first ad- – place they went to for advice was Facebook. So, and not just Facebook, a public Facebook group. Right. Yeah. Of strangers. So we talk about that and, and, oh boy. Um, and where we should be looking for advice and, and should we be um, seeking advice that we really want to hear or advice that we don't want to hear? Right. So that's, right. that's the marriage Monday. It's good. And then family Friday, uh, we will be talking about, how to get babies to sleep. <laughs> we'll be giving a live demonstration on how Jack Daniels can be used to put babies that to sleep. That is not true. We've never done that. <laughs> no, I think the that. lights are making him struggle to go to sleep. All right. But. No, we will be doing an episode on uh, 
what it looks like to be dedicated to raising uh, our children, children before the Lord. Right. Yeah. We did an episode last week on Marriage Monday about <laughs> being dedicated to marriage. Now we're going to talk about being dedicated to parenting. To parenting. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We always love you guys being here. I love getting an opportunity to connect with some of you live. Um, and so, uh, man, I appreciate you carving out some time to be with us. Until next week, Marriage Monday tomorrow morning, uh, Family Friday coming up later in the week, and then we will see you seven days from a half hour ago for another Sunday Night Live. Yeah. Thanks, guys, so much for joining us. Appreciate you being here. And remember, God is for your marriage. Have a great week.